The success of Star Wars propelled George Lucas from an indie filmmaker to a Hollywood titan. But despite Lucas's reputation as a dominating creative force, his rise to billion-dollar success didn't come without some questionable traits that tend to get pushed under the rug. For example, Domestic Dark Side In a 2005 interview with Film Freak Central, Luke Skywalker himself, Mark Hamill, called George's ex-wife Marsha Lucas the warmth and the heart of the original films and cites her influence as what's missing from the prequels. Marsha was part of the Academy Award-winning editing team responsible for shaping the original Star Wars trilogy and famously helped make some big decisions regarding plot and characterization. But as Michael Kaminsky's The Secret History of Star Wars notes, following their ugly divorce in 1983, Marsha was practically erased from the history books at Lucasfilm and became the forgotten Lucas. In a 1997 interview, Marsha says that George rudely dismissed her and her contributions to the franchise. In his mind, I always stayed the stupid valley girl. He never felt I had any talent. He never felt I was very smart, and he never gave me much credit. Underwear in Space Princess Leia's bikini in Return of the Jedi became such an iconic image that it even has its own Wikipedia page. But in her final book, The Princess Diarist, Fisher said she was always uncomfortable with Lucas's choice to put her in such a revealing outfit. I thought he was kidding, and it made me very nervous. I had to sit very straight because I couldn't have lines on my sides, like little creases. No creases were allowed, so I had to sit very, very rigid straight. That wasn't the first time Lucas's wardrobe preferences made Fisher uncomfortable, according to her memoir, Wishful Drinking. She was only 19 when the first movie was made, and on the first day of filming, Lucas told the young actress she couldn't wear a bra under her dress. Why? According to Lucas, there's no underwear in space. The Phantom Minstrelsy the Phantom Menace was a huge box office success, but is often cited as a low point in the franchise. A big reason for that is the inclusion of a few racially insensitive characters, as Bruce Gottlieb of Slate noted back in 1999. Crafty Japanese trade villains aren't the only heavy-handed ethnic stereotype in The Phantom Menace. As the story continues, the heroes slip past the evil Japanese to a nearby planet, there, they attempt to repair their broken spaceship, but are stymied by the hook-nosed owner of the local parts shop, Watto, who also happens to have a thick Yiddish accent. Making matters worse is the controversial character Jar Jar Binks, who many perceived as an unfortunate stereotype of African Americans. Lucas dismissed the backlash as a manufactured controversy, saying, You can only sell newspapers by creating controversies and making controversies. Critical Intolerance as criticism about racial stereotypes and the Phantom Menace continued to grow, Lucas became increasingly defensive to the point where he began lashing out at critics and essentially calling them all stupid. Lucas told Salon in 2000, They certainly don't know anything about history. They don't know anything about film. They don't know anything about politics. They don't know anything about sociology or psychology or anything. I mean, it's like you get into a conversation with them and it's hard to find a subject they can actually converse on. Slaver Slip Up Disney purchased Lucasfilm in 2012 for a whopping $4 billion and sent shockwaves through the fanbase when they announced a new sequel trilogy. Behind the scenes, Disney decided to not use Lucas' story outlines for the new movies, prompting Lucas to use some ill-advised words during an interview with Charlie Rose. I loved them, I created them, um, I'm very intimately involved in them, and obviously... And you no sold them. them. I sold them to the white slavers that take these things and... And, uh, <laughs> okay, but. Lucas later apologized for calling Disney white slavers in a statement to The Hollywood Reporter. I misspoke and used a very inappropriate analogy, and for that I apologize. Thanks for watching. Click the Nikki Swift icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.